I'd like everybody to meet Sarah Cooper, the new representative from the planning board. Hi, Sarah. Hi. Hi. Hello. Do you know, every, do you know everybody here? On the Maybe phone. Maybe not Andrew. On the phone is Doug Caldwell. From I know Mass Doug. Valley. Yeah. Andrew Hi. Ostrowski's on your. He's conservation. Oh, conservation. Yeah. Gotcha. You know Judy. Yeah, and I know yeah. Don. And I know it's you. Separate for a lot of meetings together. And Donna Wiley on the, you know her. All right, great. We, we are in constant communication, yeah. Sarah. <laughs> so Doug, you can't see her, but she's going to be the new uh, representative from the planning board. Here's what's going on. We, we, there's a little bit of a shakeup going on. Donna Wiley is resigning from historical commission. Therefore, she will no longer be our representative from the Historical Commission to the CPC. Judy Marklin is resigning from the planning board, so she will no longer be our representative to the CC, CPC from the planning board. However, Judy is on the Historical Commission, and she's been nominated to join the CPC representing the Historical Commission. So Judy should still be here, no problem. Sarah is coming on as a representative from the planning board. And the last bit of information is Catherine from the uh, housing committee, a representative from the housing committee. She also has decided to resign. So we are one person short. Two, Scott Chris, the recreation. <laughs> we don't see him. Uh, he can't come tonight. And ah, that's right. Oh, yeah, it's... Chris. It's the last day of school and they're celebrating. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, thank you, Andrew. Chris, uh, what was his last name? Williams. Williams. Nice. Chris Williams uh, is a representative of the CPC from the Recreation Committee. So there's the seven board committee. <clears throat> We're missing one person. Okay. Let's do the minutes from our last meeting. Does anybody have any comments or questions? Look good to me. Uh, excuse me. I'm a, we accept Donna's last minutes. No, I'll do them for this. Oh, you're doing them. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll do them tonight. Yeah. Great, thank you. Let's have a really brief meeting. <laughs> no. We'll work on it. <laughs> no. All right, we got a motion and second to approve the minutes from March 13th. All in favor, say aye. All right. Aye. 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 I'm sorry, I was joking. Who seconded? Judy, I think so. Andrew, 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 Andrew did. Andrew did. Okay, okay. sorry. Sorry. Hmm. <laughs> right. Let's get right into the projects. The request for funding. We have one request with a number dollar number on it, and one request as a placeholder. Mm -hmm. um, you want to explain them, Judy, or? Sure. I should have. Has everybody seen a copy of them? I know I sent them out yesterday. Okay. I sent a revision to the total project number and the request on the grant match. Um, I changed the number in the project table and didn't change the total and actually changed it wrong when I did change it. So, <laughs> can't edit your own stuff. Um, so the up to 82,000 should be up to 96,038. We cross out the 96 and we're putting in the 82. Did it say 96 before? It was 96. The one okay. that Alan, the one that Alan forwarded last night, totaled ninety six. Okay, the one so you sent. Go ahead. Okay, all right. S stick to the ninety six. I. I had a double dose of antibiotics today, and my mind is not functioning very well. So I apologize. I just forgot to add the heart fund one in. I looked at it. So it can't be right. Um, so 96 is right. 
So it's the eighty two plus the fourteen thousand from yeah. They, that's where the eight ninety six yeah. comes from. Yeah. I've anyway, these are requested matches for the grants that the town submitted, one to the Heart Fund, which is a national trust for historic preservation fund for planning and consulting. And their maximum award is $15,000. They require a 100% match. And we had an estimate of 25,000 and I and increased it for contingencies to 28. So, so that's that. The, the other one is the big match from the, we assume from the underutilized properties fund. That's a state fund for municipalities for repurposing buildings for non-municipal use. It's, which is precisely what we're doing. The grants for that are large. They have a minimum, I think of 50,000 maximum of a million. Last year, the average was about $450,000. Um, and they awarded 50 of them. We weren't allowed to pick which grant fund we would be awarded from. Um, but they told us the funds for which we were eligible and this one was listed first. The other one is the Rural Project Fund. That's um, smaller, 50,000 to 500,000. It's, it's a straight competitive grant, like everything is scored and it is more popular and less well-funded. So we're hopeful that the underutilized property grant will come through. The budget is based on estimates. I've got a table there on the second page of the attachment. And we had estimates from Mahan Roofing, who did the town hall. They found that they feel that the slate roof is not worth repairing. The slate is too far gone. So it's an what, um, that, Judy, that's consistent. You, you may remember um, that uh, last summer, I couldn't get Mahan to come look at the building. At that point, they were so backed up, they wouldn't even give a date for a site yeah. visit for six months. So I had, I think he was from Florence. It was somebody Scott Kiter recommended to me. And I know Scott. And um, what that person said was that the, the slate on that building is very low quality. He called it Pennsylvania slate. He thinks yeah. it's not the original roof. He, he called it garbage. <laughs> no. um, but he quoted he quoted repairs to Sierra and Gellarmini, which surprised me. That was the air source. Uh, I'm not. You know, I shouldn't say. I don't know if it was. I'm sorry. I don't. I'd have to find the business card. So well, I, I'm not sure. I, I have. I I would have to go back through my records to see who it was. They, they said they had two. Maybe I've got it wrong. They said they had two experts who said it wasn't worth you needed replacing and another that said they would repair and and but I haven't seen their repair estimate so I mean I've, I've seen the number they produced so um I thought it was Florence because they yeah I, they, I shouldn't they, have they, said they, Florence I should, it, it may have been I I doesn't matter. Don't hold me to that. The structural engineer, um, which I've listed under consulting here, 
<sighs> just the way it shows up on the grant form. Um, Rich Korpieski had a recommendation from, I think from Aham, from a firm called the Engineering Group. And they, he will charge $500 to come out and um, $150 an hour to do the inspection. And he guessed that it would be about $4,500 in total. Um, the masonry estimate there is the one that Galvin gave to Sir and Gellarmini. We just got another one and it's about twice that directly from Galvin. But anyway, this is the budget that that went into the went into the grant. Um, we had the Mason and Sierra and Gellarmini. Sierra and Gellarmini is the firm that one of the firms that gave a proposal for the use of the building, and they were very nice about sharing their estimates with Jenny Miriam Morrison, who is um, chair of our committee. Um, they had, they commented that their engineer thought that this was a repair job, not that it could be repaired rather than needing a whole lot of structural replacement. <laughs> and the Mason agreed with that. Um, so we used their estimate and I inflated it by about a, a quarter, I think. Uh, and the window repair estimate is is from Hartwood, uh, which has very good historic preservation credentials and it includes storms. So that's the basic. We Judy, could you just just for the sake of note taking, did I hear you say that you now have a revised estimate from directly from Galvin that is double the masonry figure in this budget? More than double. Although I think it includes some other structural repair work. It's, it's not clear, but um, it came, he, he broke it out. If it were a regular quote, it would have been $158,350 changing to prevailing wage brought, brought it to $334,000, which is double. I mean, that's, that's amazing. Um, and the front steps, part of that is 260,000. I can send it, I was waiting, I have, I have it sort of in pieces in an email. I don't have a full document, but for this purpose, it's, we, we can't, anyway, it's, it's good background information to have, but it's not necessarily relevant to this application. So. But clear this up for me, Judy. It's the 683,000 is a good estimate or not? That is what we applied for based on the numbers we had at the time. So that's mm -hmm. that's the maximum we can get for the grant. Mm -hmm. At at the time was a week or two ago? Yeah, June 5th. June 4th. Okay. Um, and now that number may be a million dollars. Um, more like eight hundred something. More like eight hundred twenty-five or something. Okay. But I think this. I think the steps must be in the three hundred and thirty-four thousand. Is that what you meant? From Galvin. They're in the hundred and fifty thousand that was in this. Okay. In other words, they're they're a sub, they're a subcomponent. They're not. An, it's not an addition. Yeah. Do you, I know this is out of the question, out of the scope of this application, um, but these uh, 
the the budget or the revised budget has entirely to do with the exterior renovation. Could you just remind us, um, I don't know if you have any idea how much the interior renovation will cost, but who, who your, how your committee thinks the interior renovation is likely to be funded? Well, it, it's obviously going to depend on how much funding we get for the first part. So, but our, our initial thought was that the town would pay for the abatement, the um, hazardous materials abatement and the septic and that the long-term tenants would pay for the remainder. Thank you. But it could well be, well, who knows? That, that was our thought. Could you remind us again who our, who the committee is? What's it called? Is this a visionary committee? It's the Center School Visioning Committee. We we call ourselves the Center School Vis Visioning Committee too, um, because not everybody on the original committee is a member of this. Okay. The chair Jenny Morrison, me, Leslie Harris, Becky Jones, um, Rich Cordeski, Stan Cordelis, and somebody else. Mark Boussier. Mark Boussier, thank you. I only know that because you told us, told some group I was in recently that Mark was getting estimates. Uh, well, it's okay. actually rich, but, but uh, yeah. Thank you. So, so that's the committee. Um, and the grant proposal and the estimates, um, Jenny, Rich, and I have been doing it. They've been getting the estimates and I've been dealing with the grants. and. Sylvie Jensen has, has been our liaison and she's, she's, I wrote most of the grant. She, she dealt with the mechanics of it, which were not easy. But, so the, so what I would, if I had to guess, I would guess that we probably there's a very small probability of getting anything from the heart fund, I think. Um, and if we do, it'll probably be five or six thousand um, dollars, which would be nice. I think there's a pretty good probability of getting something from the other one. And I would hope it might be in the four hundred or five hundred thousand dollar range. I'm pretty sure it won't be six hundred and eighty three. And, and remind us when you, never mind the heart, <laughs> it's a grant, but um, well, they, when, all, when, we, when would we hear from the state? Both in September. And if I, I looked know. at your timeline right, we need to have a special town meeting in September. Yeah. So a public okay. hearing, maybe in August. Yeah. <laughs> Explain the twelve percent match for the for the state grant. They give a what they call quote special consideration if your match is more than ten percent. A match is not required, but a match helps. And if it's more than ten percent, it helps, especially. So that's that's where the twelve percent came from. Okay. So, so what does your application say about, does it pledge a 12% match or what does it say? Yes, it does. So what would the town it do? Says, it says that we don't have it, that we don't have it in hand, but the town meeting will need to approve it. Okay.
this needs to go to town meeting in August. Well, I think September. I'll, I'll have Sylvie. I was just trying ask, to think of ask the when in hearing and how much time we have to get the match. I'm not comfortable voting on this tonight by no means. Well, no, you'd have to have a public hearing anyway. That's and the, and, and, and I you think don't we, should, a, we need to have another meeting. Yeah, okay. And, and you don't have a recommendation from the Historical Commission. I mean, Judy talked us through the general plan last month, but a lot of the details have changed and, and there were no numbers in what the Historical yeah. Commission looked at. Um, so uh, we are meeting next week. Okay. Anybody have any questions for Judy or anybody else? I I, I have a question. So, <clears throat> so this is all work to do to the building in order to sell it. Well, the idea is that the town would retain it and have tenants, um, perhaps a. The latest idea is a small grocery store in the basement, something like muffins or maybe an annex of muffins, something like that, or a cafe, something that will generate income to help maintain the building. And the remainder of the building would be affordable housing. We The application stressed senior housing. Um, we emphasized the fact that Wheatley has much Many more seniors as a percentage of the population than most towns, especially town centers. Um, we haven't. Normally, you would first that that was the idea, and that was that was the concept that the select board bought. They realized it wasn't fleshed out. Um, the typical process is to hire an architectural firm or a design firm to, to do what they call a feasibility study to, to analyze the, the building code and the accessibility, accessibility requirements, um, the condition of the building, the layout, and make recommendation on best use and where in the building the uses would fit best and, and give some preliminary drawings. And at that point, um, we would we would then have information to take and, and request long term tenants. Um, obviously, if you know, I think one of the main efforts here is to get the roof fixed as soon as possible because that's that's failing and it jeopardizes the health of the whole building. Um, if we yeah, can achieve, that, I'm sorry. I, I don't mean. To, I'm sorry if I'm interrupting. But why? Why no. do we have to have a roof? What? There's, there's like no more expensive roof in the world than a slate roof. Well, it's got to do with the match and the historic. The match requires historic meeting uh, historic preservation standards, which require either preservation and repairs in similar materials, in the same materials or materials with similar visual characteristics. Um, it is possible we, we could investigate slate substitutes. Um, Han does not think that they hold up well, um, but I noticed that some one of the somebody in Amherst was quoted as saying they last a hundred years. So, so that's obviously something we can investigate. But for this I mean, purpose, Mahan is not going to give you a quote for a slate substitute because they're the top slate roof company in New England. <laughs> I mean, not just yeah, in the area, but in I New England. That. But that's and 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 they're very high quality. 
Um, and, and just to just to go back to something you said about town hall, I, I'm sure everyone knows this, but what they did was some minor repair. They were great and helpful, but but they didn't. We didn't replace the roof on town hall. Um, have you thought of getting maybe? Have you thought of starting with someone else to get an estimate for an oh, acceptable sure. s ultra? I mean, I'm. Uh, yeah, we were we were we were a little shocked when we thought the roof repair would cost 150, and now it's up to almost 400,000. <laughs> that's you know that's yeah, I know. really that is really really a lot of money. <laughs> yes, is I that understand. Doug, where you are? <laughs> no. um, you know the whole thing is very expensive, and I I think I realized if I hadn't JD Ross on the planning board commented the other day that he can't build a seven, a 250, 2,500 square foot house, uh, not a fancy one for less than $700,000, not counting the land. And I realized that my sense of what things cost is just way out of whack when all building stuff is so expensive now. But yes, we would, you know, we started, we got the go ahead to start thinking about this at the end of March and the, the grant applications were due June 5th. We didn't have a lot of time for alternatives. So, but yeah, we will definitely be looking at other options for the roof. Um, I also would like to ask the CPC, maybe not tonight, but um, to consider maybe having the structural engineers report uh, come out of administrative funds. There's almost, we don't have almost the whole, whole amount left for the, there's $8,700 in the administrative fund bucket. And that would, that would give us a lot more perspective. And just to clarify for Sarah, we do have an administrative account that gets replenished every year. Um, we can use it without going to town meeting, without getting an approval from the select board. Just we can vote on it to use it for doing estimates, doing uh, surveys, um, doing some engine. Um, what, what we're talking about here is a structural engineer estimate. Is that Public the ninety five hundred that's in the budget? It is. Yes. Yeah. Okay. It, um, it, gets, it gets rolled into other buckets at the end of the year, anything that's left, and we start over with another 5% of whatever the year's cash flow is. Um, I have another question about the the state grant. If And I'm um, asking, sort of anticipating questions that others have asked. If, if we get that grant and we do this, uh, the exterior preservation work, Our. what obligations does the town have to about keeping the building, continuing the renovation, making it functional? What, what, to, what would that grant obligate the town to? I think we were quite clear we we told them what we hoped we would do with it and that there would be long-term tenants um we didn't necessarily commit to that i think the only conditions that they impose are that it can't be for a municipal use ever within the like i You can't restore it for municipal use. I don't know about the legalities of ever, but you know, you couldn't, this grant is not for restoring it for town offices or for a police department. They, they are trying to stimulate um, economic activity. Municipalities have to apply, but it doesn't say you can't sell it. Okay, that was that was really my question. Yeah. As far as a structural engineer, wouldn't you want him to 
or her to look at this as soon as possible? Yes, that's why I would like to request administrative expenses. Yeah, I know, but he also said we don't have to maybe do it tonight. I'm trying to wonder. Well, you said you'd be meeting next month. Yeah, tonight would be great. I, yeah, right, you right. Sound, you didn't that. sound comfortable. People sounded uncomfortable, so I was. No, if it's just for that, that's that's fine with me. Yeah, just I to get an idea of what's feasible and not feasible. Now, what I've been reading is most people think that the structural integrity is okay, but we don't know for sure, and we all know how much a slate roof weighs. Well, we also we building. also know that some of these estimates are from the Sear and Gellarmini proposal for purchase, which was a very beautiful proposal, but no one from that firm ever actually came to look at the building, at least it never came to go through the building. Wow. So so some of these are there. And, and, you know, that doesn't mean that their uh, subs didn't come and look, but we should have we should have our own look. <laughs> no. Oh yeah, definitely. yeah. Didn't the police department move out because the basement was moldy or had water or something? Is that uh, why they moved there's, out of there? There's, there's definitely water issues down the cellar. Yeah, there's drainage issue, but we can't. And I had originally hoped that that could be part of this estimate. Um, I don't think that's relatively going to be too expensive to fix. Keith, Keith has has an option that he outlined. But it can't it can't be done until you know the configuration of the downstairs and what's going to be where. Mm -hmm. I mean, it involves trenching and pumping again. I was going to say you know, all the all the properties on this. Sorry, I'm pointing from my own house. It's all about grading and you know curtain drains and getting the water away. It it is manageable, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. <Yeah. laughs> and also, I I suspect that. The best way to get accessibility to to the basement is to change the grading anyway and lower it so that the entranceway will be um, at floor level rather than going downstairs. Um, it's the only you know, bathroom is downstairs. All the plumbing and that was downstairs, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 It's all awful, though. I mean, it's hard mm -hmm. to imagine any of that being. I think it's well, still it's salvage, salvageable. Not, salvageable. Are you sure? salvageable. I think it's still a chain a tank yeah, and a well, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'll just tell you, I went to school there, Sarah, when I was a little kid, so I know that place very intimately. It hasn't changed. No. Watching it off, make some money. Well, could tried. be. I, I I tried. I think if we get the roof. You know, I'm thinking it would be nice to, at this point, I would feel really good if we got enough money to fix the roof. And yeah, then the select board has to go back and figure out what they want to do. At least have a good structure if you could sell it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think we need to start with a structural engineer to make sure it's feasible. Uh, I am happy to move allocating $4,500 of administrative expenses for that purpose, up to $4,500. Would you consider $5,000 just in case? I would be happy <laughs> to uh, up to $5,000 okay. just because we have to, I mean, we have to get our hand, we the town have to get our hands around this yeah. project. Yeah. You know? yes. I would second yeah. that notion. <laughs> Keep lighting up, Doug. You got something to say? Oh, uh, no. I don't, I'm not sure why it, uh, it's lighting up. Okay. Um, moved the phone. <laughs> oh, it, it may, may I, it probably is just that I moved the phone. Yep. Okay. Well, we got a motion for up to $5,000 administration money to hire a structural engineer to look at the center school. Is there a second? I do second. I do second. Second. All right. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Uh, those opposed, say nay. Unanimous. So I guess 
give us a four weeks to look at this and maybe you'll have yeah, I'll, try and I'll see if Rich can get the engineer before the next meeting. Okay. And I will get you the the other quote, the Galvin quote. Um, he, there's there's information there about structural stability, um, but he does. Both he and the Mason recommended a, a structural engineer, obviously. Yep. Mm -hmm. Any other questions, comments? I want to thank Donna this, very, very much for. Well, the second, do you want to go to the second one? What? The second what? one's just a placeholder in case there's a placeholder, right? Right. Yeah. Well, but I, I have a. But it's a, limited to the roof. But I have a comment about that. We require um, that any revisions of the application be completed within 60 days in order to be considered. Um, I actually went back to the minutes of the meeting when we voted that, uh, which was in April of 2023. Um, so, I mean, I know, Judy, you are doing 97% of the work that's being done, but I I doubt you know, I won't be on either the Historical Commission or the CPC, but I don't think we could move forward with what you presented. We'd have to have an application. How, do you have any ideas how one would approach that? Well, you could put together an application saying, I, I don't know, do you think you're going to request $400,000? Or the or something for the, all, I mean I'm. I it's not you know one problem is it's not my. Well, you you what to do it's you the plural. select what you, you have to you, do it, but, um, and I personally can't imagine them requesting four hundred thousand dollars, but, or the town approving it actually, but. Right. Um, the, the, it's a real problem. I guess I could write an up. I could write an up to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll just make it's it up to. Talk with the committee and. Yeah. Yeah, because we don't have the application get dismissed if there's no fund. Like I said, there's no actual numbers there. Yeah, I mean, oh, no, it's, it's, it's very hard because I, I don't think we have approved a grant as large as 100000 other than for the town hall. Probably. Well, well, was the Wheatley Wood? That was pretty 60. big. We, we, yeah. we gave them 60. There was a really big uh, APR early on. That may be, that would have been before my time. Yeah. Um, yeah. But this is one of the biggest ones. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Most definitely. Yeah. But the other thing is the fund is bigger. The revenues are bigger. It wouldn't necessarily be bigger as a percentage. Yeah. Yeah. And as the cost of everything goes up, they're going to get bigger and bigger. <laughs> they are. Yeah. So you can get us some number for the yep, second I'll, application? Yep, we'll do that. Um, I have another question, Alan. What happened to the Tritown Beach people? I sent him an email saying that if he was going to be doing something, it had to be done for this meeting. Um, he wrote back saying he understood. He didn't give me. I asked him for information what happened in Deerfield, and he didn't give me any information what happened in Deerfield. So, okay, okay. That was a dot or something, wasn't it? Yeah, I don't know. There was a couple of ideas he was floating around. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure where they landed. <clears throat> Any other questions, comments? Thank you, no, guys. Nope. So now can I thank Donna for all her years of service? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it, it really has been my absolute... You, 
my favorite, favorite committee, but I keep resigning from committees. I do things that are not in Waitley as well. And they're just like mushrooms. Sarah knows this phenomenon, you know. <laughs> it's just, I'm, you know, give me a couple of years. <laughs> sure. And thank you for the minutes too. Uh, oh, you're probably. welcome. I, I still don't understand some of the funding stuff, but I no, do, the best I, do the best I can. <laughs> anyway, you're welcome, Alan. I've really enjoyed it. Thank you. It does bring up a point we're going to need another recording person. Um, uh, maybe we should maybe look at we, iron. Go ahead. We could look at iron. Some, yeah, that's a good thought. Um, the historical commission takes turns. Yes, we, ro we rotate. Without, except for the chair. Right. So. Let's see if we can hire somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of hiring somebody, should we? We should also remember Mary Ellen. All right. Who who did just wonderful? Sarah Mary Ellen Cranston was was our assistant administrative assistant for many years and was very very good and great to work with. And should or would it be appropriate for the committee to send a letter to the family? I would think so. Yeah, I'll see why not. Yeah. Absolutely. I'll try and draft something. Unless you want to, Alan. I can I can draft something up. Sure. Yeah. I'll send it around and you guys can add comments and we'll send it off to her to the family. Okay. So next meeting we'll figure it out then, but someone's gonna to have to take minutes. It usually goes on the new person. I can't read my own writing. <laughs> we'll figure it out. Any other comments? No. Do you want the next meeting to be the July date that yeah. this would be? The, oh, the, the 10th, when? I think. The 10th, yeah. At 5 o'clock via Zoom. All righty. Okay. Enjoy the heat, everybody. It's coming. Yep. Yeah. But so far, it's been a good, so far, yeah. things are growing, right? Yeah. <laughs> things sure. are growing very yeah. well. Knock on wood. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you. We'll see you soon. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.